I don't converse on the Well, that didn't work. Hello, Steve. Let me introduce myself. I'm Sheriff Dwayne Dwayne, and this here is Loomis. Pleasure, I reckon. Then, we haven't met before? Of course we have. But I heard about your alleged amnesia, and figured I'd play along. I sure hope this is just a prank, and not the start of some insanity plea. Keep your nose clean, or you'll wind up in jail, and that's no place to hold a wedding. Loomis here is my deputy. Without him, I'd have a hard time keeping the peace, or at least taking a lunch break. Mainly Loomis answers the phone and babysits the office while I'm out. Though sometimes he likes to go in the back and stain the jail mattress. Isn't that right, Loomis? Oh, now, Sheriff, what you gotta go and say that for? Loomis has more than his share of problems. I wouldn't invite him to the wedding. Or, if you do, make sure he doesn't catch the garter. That could be embarrassing. Oh, I wouldn't do nothing, Dwayne. But I sure would like a little garter than been around Stephanie's thigh. Oh, well, that'd be right special. Crime-wise, nothing much has happened in Harvest since the newspaper fire. Oh, sure. Every week or so, we get the odd transient dropping dead. But other than that, it gets pretty slow around here. Sure, you remember. The Sentinel building burned down about six months ago. That's what I'm telling you, Sheriff. I don't remember anything. Why won't you believe I have amnesia? Well, you've always been a kidder, Steve. Anyway, the fireman said the fire was caused by arson. I never caught the perp, though. But we found the gas can that was used. Yes, sir, -y, Bob. It's in the evidence room. Loomis, that's classified. Darn it. How many times you gonna have to tell me to keep my mouth shut, I wonder? Sorry, boss. You've got the gas can in the evidence room? Did you dust it for prints? 
Now you've been watching too much TV, Steve. Heck, who can make out all those curvy lines anyhow? No, it's sitting in there gathering dust, clean as the day we found it. Just in case I ever need a spare gas can. That case is closed, Steve. Why do you want to break your poor mama's heart with all this amnesia bunk? I'm telling you the truth. Why won't anyone believe me? Well, you've always been a kidder, Steve. Yeah, so everybody keeps telling me. Boy, you need to stop all this funning and get serious. You've got a wedding coming up soon. Heck, you should be thinking about your career and about joining the Lodge. I don't mind telling you, I'd never get anything done if not for the Lodge's efforts. To join the Order of the Harvest Moon is the highest dream of everyone in Harvest. Like I said, unless you get an application on the first day of the month, you're generally out of luck. Stop by the post office and talk to Postmaster Boyle. You never know. He might have a spare application laying around. Amnesia or no, you can't have forgotten you're about to marry the prettiest little thing at Harvest. I think you and Stephanie are perfect for each other. I just hope her father's disappointment doesn't spoil everything. Disappointment? Mr. Potsdam wants to hold the wedding in the lodge, but he'll never get in. Like all the rest, he's always hanging around the post office the first day of the month, waiting for Boyle to bring out that month's lodge applications. And there's always a long line, never enough applications to go around, and even if you do get an application, chances are you're right out of luck. Fewer call to the order and even less accepted. And Potsdam, well, they've turned him down so many times, Unless he does something radical, he'll never get in. Stop on by any time, Steve. Now that's a pretty button, sure enough. Where'd you find it? The site of the old newspaper building. In the ashes. I'm surprised you missed it. Hmm. How about that? As you can see, it's the button of a postal worker. And we've only got one in Harvest, and he's missing one of his buttons. So what? If you're saying Boyle burned down that building, you've been watching too much TV. That button isn't evidence of anything. He could have dropped it there any time in the past six months after the fire. Do me a favor, boy. Leave the detecting to the detectives. Anything I can help you with? Help yourself? Speaking of which, you're real lucky to be marrying Stephanie. She don't look like a good woman. I just hope she don't turn out like Mrs. Loomis. Her mercy forbid Mrs. Phelps. Good women can be awful hard on a man's needs, don't you know? Why, you sure ought to appreciate what a man's got to do sometimes in a park car or a waist high knot hole in a tree or jail cell at noon. Matter of fact, Mrs. Phelps got no reason not to sell you some of them French postcard girly picture books. If you can get any, you see clear to part with them. Bring them round with the sheriffs at lunch and I'd be obliged. Of course, I don't necessarily mean French postcards. That's just what we called them in my day. 
in a kind of girly picture book the kind men like would be just dandy. I'd be right grateful, kiddo, if you were to bring me one. Mrs. Phelps down at the general store don't help things none. She's got them special picture books, the one with the ladies. But she won't sell me none on account of she knows my wife, Mrs. Loomis. Dad gum if that don't burn my britches. If and I even ask about them, she tells Mrs. Loomis and I get the broom enough to break a man's heart. Her burning my French postcards and me unable to replace them. A man's got needs, don't you know? Oh, gosh, I wish I had some of them girly pictures. But Mrs. Loomis won't let me keep them in the house. I still remember the time she caught me holding some of them pictures up with one hand. She took the broom to me. I howled like a hound dog. The broom going up and down, flashing straw and blood, blood and stuff. And I drooped, I was crying so bad, and it was so hard I had to crawl under the porch naked with all the black winter spiders, and I got bit something fierce, little fangs are digging into my bear behind all over. I ask you, is that any way to treat a man? And Mrs. Phelps and the sheriff don't make it no easier, neither. If Sheriff Dwayne had a little kindness, he let me get around the little lady by letting me keep some of them picture books here, even if Mrs. Phelps had let me buy one. But see, he won't let me keep none here neither. He don't like me getting the jail mattress all marked up, don't you know? Sometimes a man can be good with a gun or a knife, but even so one-handed and all, he can get a little off in his aim. Ain't no shame in it. That's why the good Lord made evaporation and such. But the sheriff, well, he don't like it and don't pay no mind to a man's needs no more than Mrs. Loomis. Bless her. Any time, kiddo. Oh, oh, by George, oh, by Jiminy. Oh, this here's the real thing. Oh, can I have it? Oh, oh, thank you, Steve. Excuse me, kiddo. I gotta go check the jail for clean towels. Coming around, help me pick up.
Hello, Steve. Where's Loomis? Yeah, he's coming around. I'm out. Yes, he comes. Oh, oh, yes. <gasps> Loomis, damn you! <laughs> Wait, no, 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 you no! Uh, no! Standing up and back to the Folding up the towels! No, I ain't trying to snipe him out! No, no! Hello, Steve. How's the husband-to-be? Other than having no memory, I guess I'm all right. All right? You should be ecstatic, considering what you're getting into, if you haven't gotten into it already. Speaking of which, I heard Stephanie was grounded. Her daddy's worried about getting his meat. So if I were him, I'd be more concerned about Stephanie getting some meat. Uh, right. And you are? You always were a kidder, Steve. I'm Mr. Johnson, remember? Glad you stopped by. Just got finished waxing the tucker. I could use a little relaxation. But since Edna's not here, I might as well talk to you.